I was diagnosed in early 2005 at age 36. I knew ALS was a gradual paralysis, but didn't know it was a death sentence. However, I took a life lesson from surfing and let the panic wash over me. I got on with the process of living. Everything requires me to call and instruct someone else. This is humiliating and frustrating. The next time your head or nose itches, see how long you can restrain yourself from scratching. Now count how often that occurs during the day. Count every time you have to adjust lighting or temperature. Now imagine being unable to speak or motion to give the instructions. Congratulations, you have imagined a fraction of a percent of my daily life. We really believe in the power of technology to improve the way people work and live. ALS is such a devastating disease, but we were lucky enough to work with some really inspirational patients who taught us that more than anything, they want some more independence. That insight motivated our team to create something really special for them, to create something that's never been built. Projects like this are what inspire and drive us every day. The two main things that patients told us we want to regain the ability to communicate with our loved ones, with our friends, with our family, and we would like to regain control on things around us to be more autonomous in our lives. We called in our colleagues at Fjord and began to explore a brand new UX to help ALS patients. It was really becoming clear that wearable technologies could take our idea to the next level. The Emotive Wireless EEG Neuro Headset uses sensors to tune into electrical signals produced by the brain to detect a user's thoughts, feelings and expressions in real time. It allows the wearer to control an external application either through simple facial movements or by reading and interpreting a user's conscious thoughts and intent. If we bring together some of the technology we have, off-the-shelf consumer products, we could very quickly get to an experienceable concept that we can show to users and to patients to have a first idea if it works. You can start controlling the objects around you. So simple things like switching on and off lights, uh, switching on the TV to your favorite channel, asking for help without having people physically present to help you. This is Lifeline. I'm going to call emergency services for you. All with the power of their mind. Add to that the ability to send text and email messages and suddenly the person is able to again communicate their thoughts and feelings. We brought together a team of researchers with expertise in signal processing, in human interaction and in interface design to identify which approaches would have the biggest impact on people with reduced mobility. Any system must let the user interact in different ways depending on their ability. From touching the tablet itself to speech comments or using eye tracking and winking, it can adjust to a different range of patient interactions. Eventually, however, ALS renders a person paralyzed. So the ultimate challenge is finding a technology that allows them to control the interface without the use of their body or voice. What we're seeing is the potential of wearable technology. Digital innovations like these could help people with serious mobility issues take back some control of their lives. It's amazing what can happen when you bring together companies to take on a challenge as big as this. This is how we create the future of healthcare. But for all the technology successes and innovations, we never lose sight of the reason we started this in the first place. Technology is about augmenting our human abilities. Since the first pre-human used a bone, or stick to augment its strength or dexterity, technology has been a part of us. The noblest form of technology is that which allows recovery of lost abilities, and makes us whole once more.